like Richard, Richard it's, how can it's I too win early. harder dude like how it's, can I win harder it's, it's too early it's too early for that we're, we're, we're not quite at the bottom yet so, ah, so that'll that's... be the ticket the bottom when, it, when we so, have 11k then people will be like ah that Richard yeah what is it 11 and pray is that the same 11k and pray you need the k to make yeah. a rhyme 11k and pray yeah, so, so to answer your original question, the the second thing, I mean, I, I love the scan look. I think it's really cool. But the, <laughs> ah! but the, okay, the second thing is uh, Hacks is about education, right? And as I mentioned on my other streams with uh, your community, is that I have never seen more education in, a, in the longest form possible, I have watched maybe a six hour video with you and I was like driving to Tahoe or something like that. And I had it in the background and you were talking and talking and talking. I'm like, this guy, you know, he needs to get some sleep, right? But, but six hours, they were good. They were, they were hours well spent. So nice. education is part of the hex ethos. I, it still revives with me. I think it's not just about saving people, but it's also uh, educational in a sense of what blockchain really is, right? And we, we talk about things like self-custody. So self-custody is a, seems like two words, but it's a huge, huge area. Like what, what the hell does it mean, self-custody, right? Not your keys, not your coins. Yeah, that's one of them. Moving between countries and carrying your wallet in your head or wherever your pass keys in your head or somewhere safe and not needing to declare your assets is totally uh, freedom giving, right? So that's, well, that's I mean, self-custody right the truth, Not having your currency go to zero is pretty freeing as well. I mean, like, imagine you're in European, okay? Over the last 15 years, the euro has dropped 35, 36%. So now Americans get a 50% bonus buying up your land. So if you held dollars instead of euros over the last 15 years, you got a 50% extra free money to buy up their stuff. So if you're if you're in Europe as an American, you're like, yeah, boy, everything here is on sale for me. Not for you guys. Yeah, I, I think I tweeted the the meme, the meme with uh, Americans thinking about euro dropping. I'm going to buy an Eiffel Tower. <laughs> that was a that's cool a good, one. That's a good one, man. And like, you know, I hope that thing goes. I hope the dollar murders the euro so bad because I just, I just happen to like Europe. So, uh, hey, yeah, come on, dollar, go, little buddy. And here's the funny part: yes. it's not that the dollar's going up. The dollar's still trash, going down like crazy. It's just it's going down like crazy less fast than the than the euro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, than the rest <laughs> of the things. So, Richard, how we're gonna? help the world to be better well i mean i'm still my biggest problem is capital deployment probably and, and just getting people to do what they can do or even say they can do so like i would like to not die but i'm on my way to dying in what 20 years 40 years 60 years i mean i'm, I'm 42 I don't seem like the kind of body type that's going to a hundred. I'm 48. I, oh, you look way better than me at 40. When I got into Google, the way that uh, Larry Page pretty much hired me on the spot is that I brought in a device that had Linux on the chip, a very, very small chip that would load Linux kernel with the security features, uh, creating kind of like a very, very small, uh, solid storage computer that ran the firewall and google didn't have any concept of security at all like people were i mean people were using ssh but a lot of stuff was telnet actually and so one of my first jobs with google is so telnet to just running so basically telnet's like unencrypted ssh yeah yeah telnet you can run tcp down on port 23 minus a and get all of the packets sniffed and you can actually see everybody's text Right. So the engineers at Google, the the bunch of Stanford students uh, in Palo Alto, I mean, they, they needed to connect to the data center securely. And so my first job was to install a secure bridge over a PPP running a secure, secure tunnel. PPPOE, yeah, that's, that's the one. So uh, they ran my equipment 
that uh, I designed uh, for my first startup. So my first startup so was a hardware old. company. We're so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I come for an interview. I open up this box and Larry and Sergey, they look inside, they're like, wait a second, where, where's, the, where's the hard drive? Where's the floppy? How, how, how's it booting? Oh, it's booting from the chip. So it was kind of like a, nice, like the early Cisco type of thing, except it was a security device that was open source and it ran Linux. I have never and booted guys, a computer from. Apparently, you can boot computers from Ethernet now. Never. Yeah, done you it. can. Yeah, you can. I've also never used power over Ethernet. There's all. There's all. Man, I needed to like. Yeah. I don't have I power, KVM. Yeah, P... I KVM so bad. I'm like manually switching wires constantly. I mean, I guess it's less attack surface, but it's just yeah. a switch, you know, like. I, so my, my first. Good. So my, my, my first month at Google, I, uh, I was installing firewalls. And so I log into a firewall and I pushed the wrong firewall rule. And uh -oh. as, as people know, our people are from down. the firewall world. Uh, the the default the default rule is deny all, right? So if right. you screw up, you kill oh, yeah. everything. So I killed everything. I killed Google, and yeah. I'm like, hey guys, uh, I I accidentally did the wrong thing. Everything's down. Uh, can some can I borrow a car? Because I I didn't have a car. I was broke, <laughs> and I was taking a train to Google, and it would take too long to take a train and then a bus to the data center. So what, so, so basically, uh, like once you brought everything down, you couldn't access your own box anymore. Absolutely not. Right. Yeah, I mean, we, there was no yeah, concept. You're about, like, I need, I need remote hands now. Uh, I, I, I need my hands to power down the yeah. the firewall that I accidentally broke. Yep. So I right. I yeah. jump into some I jump into Ors's uh, Ors uh, Holsley, the the senior VP of Google. I jump into his car. I drive to the data center, you know, praying that I'm not going to get a speeding ticket. Throw my driver license at the security guy saying, everything's down, I need to get into the cage. Run yeah. to the cage, stick my fingers through the cage uh, you know, wall <laughs> and, and grab the power cables and just pull pull off the, the power circuits from the thing and then plug them back in and it reboots back to the, uh, to the previous state. Nice. And then I come back and uh, so the, Larry asked me, he says, so uh, what is the lesson we're learning here? And I'm like, listen, the lesson we're learning is that we don't know shit. And uh, especially me, uh, because I'm like 23-year-old dude. And But what we should do, we should get out of band dial-up so that if I screw up again, we can dial in, not through the internet link, but connect to the firewall over the modem and undo whatever we do. Well, I would, so I would just use, I would use a remote. Uh, there's a product from APC that would allow you to like log into it to just power cycle actual power cords yes really like. you can do that assuming you, you actually connection. have you need a, yes, you need you a do. side channel no yeah, yeah it's, side channel, out, it's pretty awesome it's called out of band and eventually i i bought like 500 apc power strips and they became there the standard go. google data center issue remote reboot yep. uh, <laughs> like things it. Well, yeah, we got the PC working on it, and uh, I, I don't think that changed. Like that is still an awesome idea today. Like yeah. sometimes you have to call the data center and be like, "Yo, you need to hard reboot the box." Thanks. Yeah, yeah, it's still a thing. That that's that's like never going away. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the funny thing about Google is that when I when I first joined, uh, they're like, "Hey, so what kind of title do you want?" So I I I, I went Technology. online and. I went online and and uh, I I looked in, into into a, a little report. Who makes the most money? Which titles should make the most money in the future? <laughs> That's smart, good one. And uh, the one that was making the most money <clears throat> was a network uh, senior network administrator. Nice. And I'm like, hey guys, I'm I'm gonna start a new group. It's called NetApps at Google. And uh, it's okay. I'm gonna be the first one, but since your guys are busy coding the thing and uh, you know messing with Linux, uh, we need network up and working and be redundant because it's down all the time. So, uh, but in the back of my mind, I figured this is the highest paying job title. Therefore, <laughs> therefore, I'm fitting in just nicely. And uh, and I figured, hey, as long as there's a manual and as long as there's a you know Google search, I can figure things out as I go. Nice man. Oh, so that's the that's the beginning. Good choice. Good choice. 
Yeah, I like I like how uh, Elon Musk does his titles. He's he's Techno King, and like their their uh, treasurer is named like Master of Coin. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, he's, he a, made he's, the, a, uh, he's an alien. Yeah. Elon Musk is an alien. alien. He, and so is Vitalik, by the way. They're coin. from the same. They're from the same planet, Vitalik and um, and uh, and Musk. They're from the same planet, except uh, Musk is like all in, all into like transportation, and uh, Vitalik is like uh, Mother Teresa of the crypto world. He's he's a, he's a crypto jeebus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like Vitalik. He supports the same charities I support, and he writes free software and. You know, but then he also sells the top on the day and makes the top by chucking fifty million on Coinbase, and then telling his buddies at the Ethereum Foundation to dump it too. Yeah. I don't like that that much. I don't like the fact that he uh, jacked hexagons and lots of other ETH users and gave everyone else a discount on gas while raising our gas costs. And then since yeah, it averaged out, also- they were like, "Hey, it was fine because it averaged out." You're like, "No, no, that's that's not that's not why we, like." That's why we don't did use you, averages. Like that's why. Did you talk to him about it? Because it, it no, seemed like it was circumstantial. No, nah, it, it's like, hey man, that little decision of his, along with otherwise high gas fees, allowed Pulse Chain to be a thing. So right. Well, hey, had he not done that, that, and the gas fees not been high, you wouldn't have a Pulse Chain now. Sure. So out of uh, adversity, gems blossom. Right. That's yeah. that's the story yeah. of the world. Thank- Thanks for driving us to greatness. Here's the funny thing. So, so like so many people, they they call uh, they call me a scammer, and they make these predictions. They're like, "Oh yeah, he's gonna disappear." You're like, "Hey guys, uh, I'm on TV. I got a documentary near done about me. Uh, I keep creating new stuff. The stuff I made previously has been working perfect. I'm out there as much as I could possibly be. How is everyone else doing?" In hiding, well, we're Susie well, you realize. hiding. Kyle Davies hiding. Uh, all these losers that everyone gave more follows to, and and got wrecked, all in hiding. You're like, well, uh, I won. I'm just going to well, realize awesome stuff. All all of it is the projection. So people are what people see in the world. They're projecting themselves onto it. So they're thinking, what would I be doing if I was him? Ah, right. Right. I would be running for the hills. Yeah. Right. And uh, they're like, I had, I had the reporter lady ask me like, why do you, why do you care about saving people? And my brain is just like, doesn't everyone do that? Like, isn't that like default humanity is to just try to make sure other people aren't getting screwed. Like not if you don't have anything, if yeah. your bank account is zero and all of a sudden you have a billion, the temptation to disappear and abuse the world with your monetary energy is, uh, yeah, is intense. Weird. I mean, I've been retired since 2003. So, like, this is, like, uh, 20 years of retired. I like I like when people call me the spam king. They're like, yeah, I got sued 20 years ago, 20, in civil court for $500. And I couldn't get a lawyer to represent me because you're not allowed to in small claims court. You're not allowed to have so- a lawyer. So my recommendation twenty years ago that you should you should you should give people more ammo. So all of those things are already well known. I wrote books. I wrote SciVive. I mean, there's got to be something terrible in there, right? So two, it's like the world's it's like five hundred pages of book. 